art is a natural process. Something that no matter what, we keep staying in all different cultures and with all different people. We use art as a language of imagery. It helps us really make meaning of our lives. I, I think we've got a problem in our society when we consider this notion between good or bad art. There is no such thing. It's just like a core part of everyone. You just have to find your medium. All materials in every art process has the potential for therapeutic benefit. We end up making meaning of our lives through the images that we create. Art is an extension of the person, there's no question. As art belongs to everyone, so should art therapy. Art therapy is where clients work with art as a means to explore and interpret their emotions alongside an art therapist. Embark on this journey with us into the world of art therapy as we explore the transformative power of creativity. Art in any environment is therapeutic, and it should be seen as such. Um, that's not art therapy. Now, I'm not saying one is better than the other, because without art and the therapeutic value of art, Art therapy wouldn't occur. Art therapy basically is a way of helping us express things for which we have no words. You know, sometimes we have events in our life that we experience through our senses, our emotions, our bodies. And so those events are encoded in that way. And so we use art and, and uh, you don't have to be an artist. We use art as a language of imagery. It's not art for creating fine art. It's just a, a mode of communication. As it's not such a widespread discipline, there are many misconceptions held by those that are unaware of the benefits of art therapy. They see it as arts and crafts. They see it as, we'll just come in and we'll teach them how to do art and yada, 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 and then they leave for the day and boom, you've done your work. It's not just creating a drawing on a piece of paper or coloring. It's basically taking something that is maybe difficult to talk about and putting it into like a visual format, like a visual language. And it can help really with like a lot of in-depth exploration of that. These misconceptions might even push people away from considering it as a form of treatment for them. People don't think they can try art therapy if they can't draw or if they don't have any artistic experience. And the great thing about art therapy is that it's for everybody. It's more about the therapeutic process and working through art and then making like a fine art masterpiece. The materials used during the therapeutic session have great significance and art therapists take careful consideration when deciding to use certain materials over others. All materials in every art process has the potential for therapeutic benefit. I might prescribe a particular material for the day. So for instance, if someone is very overwhelmed emotionally, and they're having trouble focusing, we might shift to more cognitive emphasis. That usually would include uh, more restrictive materials, so like pencils, rulers, colored pencils, fine tip markers, because those help someone focus more on reality and on problem solving. But if you want to start loosening people up and getting more emotive and more expressive, you can start uh, offering materials that might be more fluid, might be more complicated. Uh, directives that are a little bit less structured. If I have a client who isn't connecting as much with like the drawing process or with something like two-dimensional, we might move into something more three-dimensional. I have had clients who love to use like, you know, felt or pipe cleaners or cotton balls and stuff like that and kind of like taking all of these materials that you wouldn't really picture as like traditional art um, and that's how they're able to really like create how they're feeling and what they need to express. Sometimes if they just have a blank piece of paper, um, there might be a lot of pressure on them. So I think that the materials make a big difference in you know, how they express themselves. We had the opportunity to engage in an art therapy session with Amanda Hausman, a registered art therapist and licensed mental health counselor with her own practice, Wildflower Art Therapy. What I was hoping we could do today is to create something called a landscape self-portrait. Okay. Um, and so I know that sounds a little like out there, but um, it's a really great way to kind of reflect on yourself. What that means is if you could imagine yourself as a landscape, what would you look like? So 
Would you be a stormy sea? Would you be um, a starry night sky? And just create that. And then what we'll do is we will talk about it um, after you're done. And as always, no pressure for what you create. Um, it doesn't matter what it looks like. Um, we're just focusing on the process. Okay. Sound good? Sounds good. Yeah. Okay. Through the art making process, the therapist is able to work through the patient's struggles and reveal their emotions. Using the art materials, using the art work, we can help bring about a sense of well-being, recreating new sense of self. They could tell their visual story in a product, but it's the art therapist that allows us to kind of figure out what happened before that story and after that story to then facilitate the process to help um, take that further. What we are able to do is work behind the mask and keep it in place. So I let the art do all the work for me. And sometimes when we use artwork, we don't want to ask like direct questions, for instance, well, what does that color mean? Because people don't know. We want to engage them in storytelling about their their images. You try and objectify it a little bit and stay, so what that, what's that person? What might they be feeling or doing at the moment? And try and engage people in beginning to tell their story through their images. Our therapists pay attention to the process, the dynamics, the interactions to help facilitate uh, development and challenge and, and expansion. And so the art therapist is paying attention to the process of the art making and all the therapeutic benefits thereof. So, so to ask, do, do we need an art therapist? The bottom line is yes. We're not simply arts and crafts. We are using the materials, understanding the inherent qualities of those materials to really recognize how we can manipulate those processes to get to a, a trajectory or a therapeutic end. While there are numerous ways of conducting a session, in this example, once the art making process was completed, a dialogue between therapist and client unfolds to interpret what is being expressed. Finished? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. So can you tell me a little bit about what you created? I would say this is my hometown beach. Clear sky, but there's like a little bit of like clouds rolling in mm -hmm. okay so there's a storm kind of on the horizon yeah kind of. i was curious about when you were creating it kind of the movement that you had with it mm -hmm. um can you describe that for me yeah so i was kind of just i guess maybe like scribbling mm -hmm. <laughs> and then spreading it like smearing it do you feel like the the movement reflects at all how you're feeling and yeah like, I mean I guess I'm feeling a little nervous so mm -hmm. um it's okay yeah I guess the smearing is kind of just me trying to maybe scramble a bit it's okay to to feel anxious I know um also just like looking at a blank piece of paper can cause like that anxiety to come up so yeah. I appreciate you creating despite feeling anxious um what do you feel like this would look like if it were to become more calm more going on on the beach maybe mm -hmm. like trees and just less like isolated maybe okay so maybe more um it sounds like more like life more yeah like sound and things like that mm -hmm. as far as like what helps you feel calm in your life um what would you say like helps you feel calm i guess it's kind of the same thing a lot of action makes mm -hmm. me feel calm weirdly enough like being with my friends and my family when it's like like everyone's laughing and talking and there's a lot going on or there's mm -hmm. food too and there's like it's like all my senses are kind of like being stimulated is when I feel most calm. Do you feel like there's anything else that is significant about your art or that's important to know about it? I guess the fact that I was kind of picturing my hometown beach mm -hmm. when I was creating it like this like beach is where I've gone so much that it's kind of like a part of me so mm -hmm. like I when you said like a portrait of who you are I guess that's kind of what I thought of yeah like the the beach is a core part of of you and who you are yeah all right well thank you so much for sharing it with me I thank appreciate you. it <laughs> that was awesome yeah. <laughs> thank you so much yeah of course in order to make progress with a client art therapy is typically conducted as a continuous and ongoing process Amanda Hausman explains a past work created by a client of hers. So um, this is a landscape that was created by a client of mine. She has been going through some different um, transitions over the past um, pretty much year. This was a depiction of her mountains and valleys over the past three months. Um, and so 
The way that she described it was that these mountains were the positive part um, of the past few months. And then this part down here um, is more fluid um, and moving. And so the way that she described it was um, these are the challenges that she had and they are always changing and she's always having to adapt to them. And so that's why um, it had that movement. Art therapy differs from other forms of therapy because it allows clients to express things they might not feel comfortable with sharing in words and also gives those who can't speak a new form of communicating. The art helps break through various defenses. Well, they might be lying, the art doesn't lie. And so I think it works in conjunction with verbal therapists. I think we have to be able to understand the language of, of verbal counseling and therapeutic interventions and therapeutic dynamics. But many of us work with populations that can't or won't talk. And so let the art do the work. I had clients that sometimes didn't have the ability to communicate verbally, whether that was because of hallucinations or um, psychosis, where they just weren't in a state. But you really paid attention. You could really see them trying to communicate their experiences. And um, the art was really helpful in just being able to meet them where they were at and not expecting them to be verbal or kind of have these symptoms fixed in order to benefit from therapy. And I think there's a lot of people that are like that and it's not fair if the only form of therapy we have is only talk therapy. So um, I think it's really important for accessibility and making sure that we're providing people with, um, yeah, just accessible forms of mental health treatment. Since its early beginnings in the 40s, art therapy has evolved significantly getting prominence and acceptance as a dynamic field. However, it is still being developed and growing today. One of our long-term goals was to make art therapy a household name. And I think it's getting there. I think a lot more people know what we do. A lot of people know what we can bring to the table. Art therapy has been licensed in a number of states. Uh, we're actively seeking license in probably about another 14 or 15 others. So while everybody will probably indicate that we need more research, there's a lot more research than there ever was. So I, I see so many positive changes and I do see some challenges. We're getting out there and we're getting worldwide. It's exploding. While engaging in art therapy might not be an option for everybody, you can't dispute the therapeutic nature in creating. Art therapists encourage those who are willing to try and find a creative outlet, regardless of the medium. The biggest thing about art and music and all these different creative modalities is that it kind of has like the human condition left in it like you can feel the emotions and the meanings behind it and we use that to communicate and share with those around us. A major part of the transformative action of the arts is that um, you get to externalize something and then you get to share it with somebody. I think that like no matter what it is like Everybody creates art in some way, whether it's gardening, cooking, music. So I think like it's just a really natural part that we have to express in ourselves in some way. Um, and so something that's really interesting is a lot of people come in and they'll be like, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to make art. I haven't made art since I was a kid. It doesn't have to be traditionally what we think of as art. So I think it's just like a core part of everyone. You just have to find your medium.